This is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite mechanism in Eternal Palace. And really, I have a few things to talk about. This is a lighter weight Euro game, but there are a lot of really clever mechanisms in it. In particular, the tension between players based on how the action spaces work in the game is really, really clever. The core construct of the game is that each player is going to be rolling some dice. You'll start out with three, you'll gain some more dice over the course of the game. They're standard D6 dice. And behind a screen, you are going to... Um, group those dice into various numbers. So I might group, if I roll a one, a two, and a four, I might group that one and two together to become a three, and then the four uh, separately. And a few different things matter here based on the actions on the board, because when it comes around to my turn, we'll reveal those dice so everyone will see them. I really like that open information so it's not completely concealed. Uh, we'll reveal what uh, dice that we've grouped together, and then on my turn, I'll take one of those groups and I will place them on an action on the board. These actions are numbered one through 12. Um, so that group of three that I created, I would place it most likely on the three action down here and gain that benefit. Um, some actions have uh, benefits that are better if you use multiple dice. So if I just roll a single four and I place it on this action, I get one wood. But if I create a four using multiple dice, I actually get three wood, which I think is really interesting that they're actually saying, okay, more dice is better even if you're creating lower numbers with those dice. I think that's pretty cool. Um, even with the, the 12 up here, you can use four dice up here to get four different things. Lots of neat ways to use dice. However, um, not however, the, cool, the coolest thing to me is how this placement system creates a lot of great tension in the game because um, there are a couple of reasons that you might want to work on a particular action over other actions. First, if if I'm the first player to go to the three here and another player wants to go there on the same round, they can do so, but they have to pay a fish to the supply. So if other players are there, you need to pay a fish. That's one thing. So there's a little bit of tension to get someplace first so you don't have to play that, pay that extra cost. Two, um, some of these things uh, have escalating costs. So there are four different buildings. They're over here on this side of the board. There are buildings that you are going to be constructing and it's kind of a king of the hill thing. So if I, uh, at the beginning of the game, the cost is one resource for one of these buildings. If I pay that resource, I get the building. The next player who wants to make that building and grab that token away from me, which is worth a point at the end of the game, um, they need to pay two resources and they accumulate on this action. So over the course of the game, a building that started out costing one resource might cost four or five resources at the end of the game. So again, there's this nice tension to get in early, buy it now before someone else does so that you can get, so you don't have to pay a higher price. The third level of tension is uh, each of these is a little race up a track. There are lots of little tracks here on the board where if you race up that track, uh, you can, uh, you gain, and you're the first to get up to the top of the track, you gain a special little bonus. Anyone who gets to the top of the track gets a, a big bonus, an important bonus, but if you get up to the top of the track first, you get um, a little bonus that you add to your painting. And this is almost where I want to switch the video up real quick to talk about my other favorite mechanism of the game, because I love all that tension, but it's a lot of stuff going on there. My favorite component slash mechanism in the game is that most of your points are geared around the idea that you are making a painting. And you can see this on the box. There's someone illustrating a painting here. And uh, it's kind of hard for me to hold, off, so hold up. So I'm just going to hold up a, a picture here showing what a painting might look like at the end of the game. They're on uh, easels. And uh, you, every player has their own little easel. And over the course of the game, as you're completing those tracks... Um, or building a building, you get a layer of this painting. It, it is hard to tell here, but this is, uh, there are a number of, of mats, 12 different mats that go into creating this painting. And you actually put them on here and create this painting a little bit like Canvas, the game Canvas, as you go. And this isn't just like a side thing that you're working on. This is the primary way to get points in the game because every layer on this painting, whether it's a primary layer for completing a track or a bonus feature, that's what you get for getting to the top of the track first. You get to put that a bonus feature on here and create another layer using that feature, which is another point. So I really like that you are creating something throughout the game and that most of the points that you'll get are focused on that creation that you're making um, in this beautiful artistic illustration. I think by Jackie Davis. I think she is one of the artists in this game that we've had the pleasure of working with as well. So I think that's really cool, um, that idea of creating a painting and pretty much everything you do for, during the game is built towards making that painting, and that painting is most of the points that you'll get at the end of the game. That, those are my thoughts on Eternal Palace, my favorite mechanisms and component in this game. If you played it, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you can think of another game, perhaps other than Canvas, because Canvas uses a fairly similar mechanism of making a painting that uh, pushes 
almost all the points toward a central thing that you were creating that you can be satisfied with at the end of the game. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks.